Okay, last thing I want to demonstrate here about um, relatively accessible uh, set design choices you can make in Unity um, is creating uh, an emissive material, that is to say a colored light that, um, that an object can literally glow on its own. Uh, now, the first uh, thing I want to do here is do a kind of time lapse where I build a little um, a little roof, a little lean-to. Here I go, I'm going to use a couple of cubes to do this. Okay, so just like that, I've built like a strange little modernist house here. Um, I'm going to call these all walls um, just to get in the habit of knowing what things are. And then remember that you can create empty objects called anything you want, like house, and then child things under them. So now we've got this object that's selectable called house. Um, and um, I'm now going to make a light glow inside this house. Um, but I'm going to do it instead of by using a spotlight or a directional light, I'm going to do it by making um, an actual 3D object glow. So let's make another cube just to be simple. I'm going to bring this cube over under my roof. And I'm just doing a roof because it's going to make the light um, more obvious when we see the effect happen. And in my uh, materials folder, I'll create a new material and I'll call it pink light. Um, and instead of worrying about the albedo, I'm going to point down to emission. I'm going to tick this box and choose a color. Um, and I'm going to go for, like I promised, some kind of pink here. And I'm going to turn up the intensity a little bit on it. Um, and drag this pink light to my cube. Okay, so my cube looks white. Uh, it looks like it is a light bulb or something, but it's not casting any light right now. And there's one more setting that you need to know to make this work. This has to be what's called a static object. So this um, light cube uh, can't be moving. It can't be one of those objects that's falling from the sky, for example. You have to tick this static box on it, and then anything that's going to receive the light needs to be static as well. Um, so right now I'm clicking the whole house and choosing static and it's asking me, do you want to make all these children underneath it also static? And I say, yes, change those. Um, so now you'll see automatically it starts um, rendering some lighting conditions that are much different than what we had a minute ago. And um, some of that stuff that you might have seen uh, so far, just looking at Unity being like, huh, you know, it's sort of cool, you can do 3D design, but the graphics look really simple. You know, there's no um, complications to the lighting or whatever. Um, that's because uh, we haven't started dealing with um, which objects are static and things like uh, environmental lighting, bouncing or coloring. So now you can see up here, we're getting a lot of color from the sun, which we turned yellow. Down here, this has all gone hot pink because of this pink light bulb that we've created. I'm 
on our building project had an environmental impact so maybe we need to move that uh, that palm tree over a little bit but as you can see um, when it's uh, calculating new lighting conditions um, it's it's doing what's called baking um, and uh, I have mine set up by default I haven't changed anything to um, to do that on the fly as needed um, but you'll see that as uh, as it figures it out it gets less modeled looking less spotty so any object in your scene that you know is not going to move can be set to static and it'll receive more complicated light um, it'll be part of the kind of lighting calculations that bounce around in this space. And so finally, with a little more putzing around and duplicating of houses and just changing the size and orientation of those walls, I've got a scene that um, I think might be pretty interesting to walk around in in VR. Um, so if I fire that up and try my simulated camera rig, I can walk through these dark spaces with um, with the pink light. I stuck an extra um, point light that's blue but isn't coming from any visible place just behind here as kind of like a backlight behind there. Um, and uh, threw up some walls that are going to throw shadows and give us a little bit of um, sense of boundary while we can also come to the edge. So anyway, um, that's my goal, is for you to try to make a, uh, a space that seems captivating and exciting and maybe maybe a little bit impossible, um, because that's part of the fun of VR. But uh, those of you who either have a headset or have maybe the thoughts occurred to you, um, with this simulated camera rig in VRTK, we're able to, to kind of walk around this thing like it's a first person shooter game or something, but we haven't actually programmed the ability um, for a VR headset user to move around here um, beyond their ability to walk out in, around in their own room. And of course, if your space um, that you have for your VR headset is smaller than the space we built, you might be thinking, wait, how do I get all the way over here? Um, well, next week, I will show you how to use um, locomotion methods in VRTK uh, to do exactly that, to provide a system that will allow us to move um, our whole play space throughout this virtual space.